Welcome back to the Hollow Sky Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Steven. And Kyle. Thanks for hanging out with us on this fine Monday morning. Not Monday for us. It's Saturday night. The same Saturday as last Monday. Yeah, because this is how we do it. Because we have no free time. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. So, we're going to get through a little housekeeping, and then I got an episode on death. So that should brighten up everybody's day. Sick. All positivity around the well, sky parts. And in all <laughs> fairness, it is a Monday morning. <laughs> so there's like a double whammy right there. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Anyway, check us out at all our social medias. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, Discord. Anywhere people be social, that's where we're at. So search up the Hollow Sky Podcast and come and hang out with us. Be part of the community. Just just share weird stories, weird experiences, whatever you find that's weird on the internet. That's what we're here for. Not, not too weird. Okay, too weird. Whatever you want to share. But if you have a paranormal experience you'd like for us to feature on a show, Kyle has all the deets you need as to how to get it to us. I got what you need. Just give uh, the holophone a call or a text, and then the phone number is going to be one six one eight five five six zero eight three seven. It's also in the show notes. You can record yourself with a voice memo app or just your video. Shoot it over to the email, holloskypodcast at gmail.com. You can also write your stories out, send them to wherever you want to send them. Don't really care. I always forget about the website, too. You can send stuff there. Whichever whichever one floats your boat, you know, we're down. We just want to hear weird shit. Facts. The weirder, the better. Yeah, if you'd like to support the show, we got a whole bunch of ways you can do it. We got a Patreon, so you can go check that out, see if there's a tier you'd like to sign up for, get some extra content. Kyle's been banging those out. Uh, get some goodies, stickers, shirt tier, all kinds of stuff over there. You can just take a gander at that, see if that interests you. We have a Venmo. If you'd like to throw some pocket change in there to buy us some monsters, we are forever grateful. Best way you can support us is just word of mouth. Share the show. Share it everywhere you're at. All your social medias, word of mouth. Share it at the work cooler. Anybody listens to podcasts, anybody that likes weird shit, throw our name in the hat and see if it takes off because it's the best way to do it. You can also leave us a five-star rating and review, and I will gladly shout you out when I find them. Still going through some of the ones that are not Apple and iTunes because I just stumbled on these. So getting getting to them, I promise. This is five stars from our friend uh, Geneva. It says, you guys are hilarious. I love Hollow Sky. This is my favorite podcast. You always have the best accounts and the weirdest stuff happens to you guys. Uh, I'd love to be on your show. I've seen Bigfoot twice. I can see and feel ghosts. Keep it up and stay weird, guys. Well, hell Yeah. We'd love to hear about it. I can't see ghosts. Or Bigfoot. No, I'm trying to see Bigfoot, though. And I'm trying to see ghosts, for that matter. Yeah, yeah. And I think eventually <laughs> we will. Well, I mean, we kind of, we've seen weird shit, but we don't We don't know nothing. <laughs> That's, it's truer words than ever said. Well, I'm I'm a fucking prophet, so. That, that is true. And a poet. That's true. You knew we were going to talk about this. I did. And then I made a poem about it. <sighs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I could start <laughs> reciting my poetry here, but I just don't know that everybody's um, ready. No, I can assure you that. the world is not prepared. Yeah, because it'd be like, roses are red, Bigfoot is real. That's the end of Kyle's spiel. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, are you dumb, stupid, or dumb? Huh? Affirmative. I knew, I knew that was coming. Affirmative. Oh. Thanks, Geneva, for leaving us a five star rating and review. It we, is appreciated. We are just off the rails tonight. Yeah. We, doing some... we, me and Steve, have kind of recently turned into insomniacs and like. Well, not recently for me. Lo- well, me. Kyle, I, Kyle's new to this. Yeah, I used to be able to just 
I could. I used to be able to literally chug a monster and then go take a nap. And now, Welcome to I the... get hyper obsessive about. Th- I think this is what it is. I get hyper obsessive about shit, and I will lay there, and my brain will not shut off. Yeah, like I've been so obsessed with getting my computer desk completed. I just lay there in bed. I'm like, but I could do this, and then I could do that, and then I need to get this done and do that. Yeah, that's usually and how it, it just works. doesn't stop. It doesn't stop, and I hate it. Well, get your stuff done. I know I need to just, I need to just buy like a trank gun and then shoot myself in the leg. That sounds a painful way to get some rest, but whatever works. Yeah, because I mean it's better than drinking a bunch of cough syrup. <laughs> is it though? I don't like cough syrup. <laughs> well, I guess it is. It tastes like shit. Anyway, back on the rails. Are you sure you want to do that? Yes. We can stay way the fuck off. That is factual. Thank you for the five star rating review. Uh, we appreciate everyone that everybody leaves. I just personally like hearing from you guys, hear what you like about the show. Um, some people like to leave what they don't like about the show, but. We whatever. haven't really had that in a while. <laughs> nah, it's whatever. It's usually the same guy. Yeah. So He'll shout out, it. bro. Look at over it. Today's paranormal experience, listener experience, comes to us from our friend Alex. It says, ghost clock story. Make sure you don't accidentally say ghost cock. Winky emoji. Somebody take that away from him. Yes. <laughs> Love you guys, Alex. So this is Alex's ghost clock story. Hi, guys. Uh, Alex here, all the way from England. Absolutely love your show. Like other people have said, you're up there. Sasquatch Chronicles, The Confessionals. You're just one of the top guys. I listen to you on my long drives to work, long drives home. So cheers for the company. Um, I thought I'd tell you a cool story that my mum told me uh, quite a long time ago. So her mum, or my nana, rest her soul, um, she had a brother who died um, in World War II. He was fighting against the Japanese and he got blown up on his ship's cannon that he was firing and he, yeah. So he died at the age of 18. Um, and so my Nana's mum, so I guess my great grandma used to say that she thought he was still around in the house. Um, she used to see him walk by and the main thing that she'd noticed was, you know, a cuckoo clock. Um, she'd always hear it tapping at different times throughout the day, but not, not rhythmic tapping, just, you know, how a I don't know, random random knocks on it. So um, my great-grandma went to uh, Clairvoyant and asked about um, her son, who was called Benny. And she asked about the cuckoo clock to the Clairvoyant and she said, that is more than likely is him trying to contact, you know, to, I don't know, to say everything's okay or w- whatever it is. And so... My great-grandma went home and told my nana that she had been to the clairvoyant and said, yeah, she, she told me that um, the cuckoo clock that's down in the basement is um, that that's up Benny trying to contact when it's knocking. And my nana went, oh, that's loads of rubbish. Not true. Absolutely not true. So my great-grandma said, okay, let's go down to the... Uh, to the basement then and try it and so my nana was like okay fine whatever uh went down there with her um my great grandma said hey benny if you're with us can you knock on the um the cuckoo clock uh cuckoo clock and uh, three times if you're there and they waited a few seconds and they just heard Three knocks, 
right on time and my nana went well i can't probably can't say what uh she said but let's say she was a bit scared but after a long time it became you know quite a nice cool thing so i thought that was quite a cool story it stuck with me uh i've got loads more stories that i could tell so if you want me to drop some more in just let me know but peace out from england guys love you alex thanks so much for uh sharing your encounter uh first off r.i.p benny uh thanks for your service our friend and you hear all kinds of accounts where people who have lost somebody close to them uh they essentially find ways to make contact to let everybody know that like they're they're okay talked about like my grandpa and the whole penny thing i know i just referred to it a couple episodes ago but it just gives you some kind of peace of mind that that maybe there is something after this life and maybe our, when our loved ones do pass away that they're all right wherever they're at. Does your family still have the clock? I'm curious as to if it's still making its rounds through the family or what happened to the clock. And if they do, you should go try it. Yeah, that would be interesting to see if he, if he's still making contact through the clock. Uh, also, yes, we would love to hear more of your encounters. Absolutely. hundred percent. We are ready for it. Yep. Ready for the weirdness from across the pond. Send them over, my friend. Yep. I do like these stories. They are uplifting. They're and comforting. We don't, we don't have a lot of that. We have a lot of dark stuff. Yeah. It's, it is comforting whenever you can almost make the connection yeah. with a loved one and to also, an experience. I also don't even care about knowing that there's something more. I just like knowing that my people still have my back. They're just there watching yeah. out. You know, this interdimensional shithead comes into the house and Ernie's going to backhand them and send them on their way. Like, I'm good with that. Yeah. And just out of curiosity, are... Is your long drive to work? Are you are you flying a helicopter, or maybe like a busted John boat? Did you hear it running in the background? Yeah, it almost I, it made me think like he was in a skid steer or something. Just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just pictured a helicopter like one of them shitty ass John boats that just makes that clanking noise, you know, going down the the, yeah. the river there. Yeah, but again, thank you for taking the time to send that in, Alex. We'd love to hear more of your stories. Appreciate and you. Be safe on your travels out there. Man. Yes, please. So today, I dove into uh, some encounters with death. So, so death like an entity or just death in general? Well, like an entity, not like near death experiences, but actually people gotcha seeing a personification that they think is death. Is it atypical? Some. 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 So the concept of the personification of death, as I was looking up on Wikipedia and the history of it and stuff, came about in the 14th century. Whenever I think it was the Black Plague or the Bubonic Plague came through, people were just so inundated with everybody dying that they had to create some sort of image behind it. And that's where you get the cloaked hmm. reaper. That's interesting. The scythe. Where I, where essentially the disease was mowing people down so much, they just attributed it to like a, so, yeah, a, a man sign. cutting wheat was this yeah. disease cutting through people. That's depressing. Yeah. So Wikipedia says death is frequently imagined as a personified force. In some mythologies, a character known as the Grim Reaper, usually depicted as a robe skeleton wielding a scythe, causes victims' death by coming to collect the person's souls. Other beliefs is that the specter of death is only a psychopomp, psychopamp, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, serving to sever the last ties between the soul and the body and, the gui- and to guide the deceased to the afterlife without having any control over how the victim dies. Death is most often personified in male form, although certain cultures' death is perceived as female, For instance, it is stated that the Merzana in Slavic mythology, Santa Morta in Spanish mythology, or the Lady Death from the Marvel comics appears as a woman. Hell yeah. Who's Thanos' gal, tries to be somewhere in there. Anyway, I thought I'd give that little 
history info before I get into these encounters, which some of them are just wild. The first one I actually heard on a YouTube channel that I listen to quite frequently. Everybody needs to check it out. It's called Beyond Creepy. The host, Mr. Black, uh, has a... Does he have a podcast? I don't know. That would be way better for me. I don't know. But he has uh, a relationship with the author, Albert Rosales, who does all of these uh, books. He collected tons of stories on humanoid entities, and he's released a whole series of books I'm trying to collect. But he has kind of developed a relationship with uh, Albert, and he gets a lot of his stories from Albert Rosales. And there are a ton of weird entity reports that this guy covers it is excellent content definitely check him out but this one is from his channel so the first encounter is called the sphere man it's not your typical grim reaper or angel of death entity it is one of the more bizarre entity or or cryptid maybe encounters that i have heard heard of it is fucking weird takes place in Vancouver, Washington in the mid-2000s. The witness lived in a subdivision with his parents on a cul-de-sac. Around 8 a.m., he was walking to school from his home, a route which he took every day he was completely familiar with. Uh, He only had to walk a couple blocks from his house to get to the main road that was connected to the cul-de-sac when he'd walk to school. That particular morning when he made it to the main road, he saw something that he could not explain. Something that just absolutely horrified him. At the intersection, he says, once he gets to the intersection of the main road and their cul-de-sac road, he says, and I quote, I looked up from my feet as I was walking across the road. What I could see, I can only describe as a creature that was made up of entirely black spheres. He states that although the creature was made up of these black spheres, it did have a humanoid shape. He said it had two legs, two arms, a torso, and a head. Again, it was all made up of just these big circles. He states that they were a little bigger than a basketball, about a foot in diameter. Uh, To add to this weirdness of the encounter is how he described the entity's actions. He stated it almost looked like the creature was dancing around one of the light poles at the intersection. He stated that he got the feeling that the creature was pure malevolence. He said whatever the entity was, was sinister at best. I felt like this thing was bad, really, really bad, he stated. When the creature noticed the witness looking at him, it stopped dancing immediately and began looking back. The witness states that then it just disappeared. Quote, it did not fade. It didn't make any sound. It was just there one moment, and then the next moment it was gone like it popped out of existence. The witness stated he was quite shaken up from his his encounter, but he just continued on to school as normal. He assumed that the disappearance of the entity would just end the encounter. Coincidentally enough, at home later that evening, he and his parents were startled by a loud commotion outside. The cause of the commotion was a terrible accident off the main road. It's reported that a group of inebriated teenagers decided to race their cars down this main road, resulting in awful consequences. Four of the five people involved were killed at the scene. The fifth was gravely injured as a result. The witness and his father decided to make their way down to the accident scene to see what had transpired. He states, I went out with my father to the corner where it happened. I was shocked to see that it was the exact same intersection where I saw the sphere thing. I cannot help but think I saw something strange that morning, something that I wasn't supposed to see. Even though the creature isn't like your stereotypical cultural icon that we connect with death, the Grim Reaper, Angel of Death, you know, the whole skeleton in a cloak, the whole nine yards, it's hard not to connect it with some sort of like harbinger of doom considering the accident happened right at the same spot where he saw this thing. And another little note like, the the dancing just seems fucking weird to me. Like, was it, was it? Like, it makes me think of like a voodoo person, you know, putting a. Was like it a some sort of like death something. ritual, yeah, like yeah, it was yeah. doing, or was it like celebrating that this this was? Yeah, which coming is to happen. Terrifying. The description of it alone is terrifying. Just a bunch of black spheres, and like when you're reading that, like my initial, like I'm, I'm listening and I'm like, is he sure it wasn't one of them like stupid? Uh, air blow up people that places have that just sway back and oh, forth, you know. 
But Whack, then wacky inflatable arm guy. Yeah, and but then he's like, and then it stopped and stares at me, and then just straight up disappears. Okay, well that throws that theory right out the window. Yeah, the way he he described like it just popped out of existence. That sucks. That's cr- like, is that is it some was it like the dancing thing is so weird, so fucking weird. Yeah, I just I don't know. It was one of it's like an Indian. Praying for rain, except this dude's praying for death. Yeah, or or it was celebrating. Or for... It was celebrating that it knew it was going to happen, or it was invoking <laughs> the accident to yeah, happen. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Not cool. Not cool at all. The I next, don't like it. no, and the fact that it the fact that it's so different from like other encounters with creatures we perceive as the Grim Reaper is just so bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, I wouldn't even, I don't even know that I would make that connection right out of the gate. Like, because yeah. if, if the accident wouldn't have happened, there would be no connotation there. There would be no yeah, connection. Yeah. This next one is from the website yourghoststories.com. Uh, a woman by the name of Brooke submitted the story. She's from West Virginia. And I call this one the Foot Reaper <laughs> because it is it a giant foot with a scythe? It's creepier than that. Okay, well, now I'm intrigued. So, Brooke says, In the summer of 1996, I was sharing an apartment in Huntington, West Virginia. My roommate and I were having similar experiences but did not discuss it to each other until I had the scariest moment of my life, supernaturally. What led up to my experience was on different occasions, my roommate and I were having something tapping on our feet while we slept. I was sleeping on the couch downstairs one night after falling asleep watching a late night movie. At the end of the couch where my feet were, I kept feeling a thud, like something was hitting the end of the couch where my feet were. This happened a few times on different late nights. Later, my roommate confided in me that she had something smack her bare feet while she was asleep. One evening, arriving home after work at the local pawn shop where I was a secretary, I walked into the apartment and no one was home. So I walked through the kitchen where the answering machine was located to check the messages. Something in my apartment felt off to me, like something in the room felt weird, like someone was there even though no one was physically there. I can't really put it to words. I checked the machine and had my back turned. All of a sudden, something or someone tapped me very hard three times on my right shoulder. Frightened, I didn't dare turn around. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw what looked like a long, bony finger with three raised bony knuckles. The apparition was kind of cartoonish in that it was blue and green, but real bright. I stood still and really didn't know what to do. Then I heard a voice that haunts me to this day. Nobody's home, it said in a deep, guttural, angry turn. Calmly, but with the hair on the back of my neck standing up, I walked through the living room and went upstairs to my bedroom and locked the door. About an hour later, my roommate arrived home. I called her down in a frightened yet excited voice and told her what had happened. Being the accepting accepting ghostly kind of person she is, she believed me and recounted our feet experiences that we had had. To this day, I think about what happened to me and it scares me to death. It never bothered me again and I try not to think about it too much and give it energy to come back for another visit. Whatever it was seemed very large and very tall. I felt that it was about seven feet tall standing behind me and, and it w- was wearing a black coat cloak almost like a grim reaper type of thing it felt very evil so you got the uh old no. grim reaper little foot, foot i'm not foot fetish going on yeah there. i i i've never quite understood a foot fetish but to we each their own we don't kink shame here at the hollow sky podcast no yeah absolutely <laughs> but uh that that sucks i it like plays on like, it plays on your worst one of the worst fears you can have, especially as a child, is like having your feet hanging off the edge yeah. of the bed. Yeah, that's what I was and thinking. Having I'm something like, fuck with it. Like I, I'm not cool with that. I am not okay with that. If something is fucking with my feet, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> and then to fucking realize it's the Grim Reaper. Yeah. It is It is weird. And how she describes it as being cartoony, like, a, like it being blue and green, the bones being blue and green, but having like the black cloak on. That's fucking weird, man. It is weird. It, now like, I, it makes you feel like alien scream memory memory type shit. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that. 
<laughs> yeah. It's gross. That. What is... Wow, man. It's gross. I just... I hate having the mental image of death coming to reap souls. And he's tickling your feet. And, and he's just sidetracked. He's like, oh, damn, she got her things out. <laughs> tickle, 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 tickle. I, I was going to say it, but I saw you primed, ready to go. Oh, it's weird. Um, I've got a couple stories from Mysterious Universe here that I'm going to go over as well. They always have good shit over there, so definitely check them out. I'm pretty sure they have a podcast, and they have a blog. They've got their blog. Pretty, they always have a ton of articles. They got their blog locked down. Though. Yeah, you it's can only ridiculous. Look at like, you can only look at like four articles a day or some shit. Oh, really? Yeah, I have to sign up for it. It's like five bucks. Ah. Sucks, cool. but everybody's got to... Get their grind on. Yeah. So, yes, this comes from Mysterious Universe. I call it just passing through. Justin, a guy by the name of Justin Falzone was in his bedroom one night in Tonawanda, New York, near Buffalo. He stated that he was doing homework when he had an encounter. He says, I'm not exactly sure the year. It occurred when I was around 10 or 11, so probably 17 or 18 years ago. Uh, out of the corner of his eye, he saw a dark figure that distracted him from doing his homework. He saw this figure and then he immediately wished he hadn't. He states, I saw death, the grim reaper. This entity stood in my bedroom doorway. It was huge, taking up the whole doorway with its body mass, half in and half out as if it were passing through. He said that a brown tattered cloak covered this almost translucent entity from its head to its feet. It was as if it was from a different plane or dimension, a reality, or however you want to explain it, he said. It was semi-transparent, but solid and massive, filling the whole doorframe. It was about eight feet tall. He said that he couldn't see a face through its dark hood, but he also didn't want to. I just got the vibe and the impression that this thing was ancient and it looked the part where the hood opening was just faded to a darker shade of sepia, almost to black. It just looked like the old depictions of death and exactly like the Nazgul creatures from the Lord of the Rings film. Of course, this terrified the young Falzone. He said, I viewed it for about 10 seconds trying to decipher exactly what I was looking at. Then I screamed bloody murder and looked away. When he looked back at the entity, it was gone. At that point, he jumped up from his chair and ran out screaming. I ran out of the room, down the stairs, and completely outside the house. It was hours before I mustered the courage to enter the house again, even with my parents' reassurance. I told my parents about the encounter, and they were hesitant to believe, my father more so than my mother. He said it scared him so bad that he refused to even sleep in his room for weeks after. The day after, however, he went to school... Just went about his day, and when he came home from school, he noticed that there were police and ambulances all outside of their apartment. He states, police, ambulance, and fire trucks lined my street and my neighbor's drive. Frightened that something terribly might have happened to my house or a member of my family, I ran in and asked my mother what had happened. She said the son of the man that lived next door came to visit that day and found his father dead. He had fallen down the steps and had cracked his skull open. Quote, the police and paramedics placed the death as sometime the night before in the phys- er, before by the physical evidence and the state of his rigor mortis. So he passed away around the same time I had seen the entity passing through my house. I never believed in the actual entity of death or the Grim Reaper, he says. I believed it was just a myth and folklore from medieval times to put an image and an explanation to natural death. However, seeing this entity with my own eyes in vivid detail... I now think that there is something more to these accounts and descriptions from the ancient path. At this point, he's pretty sure that he saw death and it traveled through his room to the house next door. I don't think it was a coincidence that I saw this thing around the same time my neighbor passed away. I think it had some business with him and was just passing through. The spot where he was found dead is pretty much parallel to my bedroom where I witnessed this. I never seen it or anything like it again and I'm glad. Well, that sucks. And one thing that I hate is a person's description when they describe an entity as ancient. That just that just hits different for me. 
when they're just like, I feel like it's ancient. Yeah. I'm like, yuck. Like, because like it's just like that. Like it's been around forever. Yeah, like it's ancient. Like I don't know. Like which feel to me, it feels like it wields way more power. Like it, it has a whole nother dynamic to it. But yeah, I mean, I'm totally in that camp. Like if, especially if it was him hanging out, any this entity more or less is just passing through. Like it doesn't really interact with him much, but it, it's on like a course. It is. And it's weird how he states that it's translucent. Like he could see through the parts of the, well, essentially everything he said was translucent. He could almost see through it. Yeah. But not totally. It still had a mass and a presence. And this is the, the, the what, the second, third one that just popped in and out of existence, just yep. disappeared. That's. Well, it makes you wonder makes you, if you're even supposed to be seeing that. Yeah, it makes like you wonder it, if it's an interdimensional being. Yeah. Which everything is in my brain. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the camp with him, though, that it was on its way to do its work. Yeah, and he, he like you said, he probably wasn't supposed to see it. Like, like, think of how many times you just catch things out of your periphery. Oh, yeah. And you just write it off like, oh, just, just it's nothing. Just seeing it out of the corner of my eye, but... Just all it takes is one time for you to fucking lock on it, and then your whole damn world has changed. Yeah, without question. Especially you, start, you, you acknowledge that you're seeing death. Yeah. Uh, the next one is from uh, another mysterious universe article. They had a bunch of different or, or a bunch of different articles on people who've seen angels of death and grim reapers and such. Uh, just the the amount of encounters once you start looking into these definitely make you question what is going on when we pass from this life. It's, it's weird. Uh, this one I just called the angel of death. So this comes from a witness named Joan Reisling. Hope I pronounced that right. Who is a hospice caregiver, mostly for people who are dying of terminal illness. She said she had one patient in particular who she had formed a pretty strong bond with because they spent so much time together and they often had deep conversations about all kinds of stuff. When one day he seemed to have seen something not from this world. <coughs> she states, I've, been, I've become quite close to one patient in particular and he would often have lengthy discussions about all things spiritual during his lucid moments. Early on the morning of his death, I'd come into his room as I had done four months or as I had done for the four months he was with us. As sunrise to open his blinds up as per his request. The blinds were quite opaque and white, already allowing the bright morning sun to light the room for normal sight. As I walked over to the window, I saw a distinctly female figure sitting next to him on the bed. I hear the words, please leave the blinds closed, in a low, multi layered voice. Her lips, however, never moved. In the existing room light, her pale, thin face was almost skeletal on one side and somewhat normal on the other side, except for the darkness of her eyes and her sunken cheekbones. She says, I just stood there in awe as she placed a spider-like hand over his heart and he opened his eyes. Upon seeing me first, he smiled and he said, Good morning, Joan. Then he calmly noticed her and his smile broadened. She bent down to kiss him and pulled her hand down firmly against his chest. Again, he looked over to me and he said, Isn't she beautiful? How can anyone be afraid of death? I felt tears welling up in my eyes and wanted to rush over and take his other hand, but for whatever reason, I was paralyzed where I stood. It was weird. I could actually see the life force draining out of him, coming out of his fingertips into hers. Almost immediately, his heart monitor went dead, and the alarm sounded. I turned for only a brief second toward the door as others were rushing in. When I turned back, she was gone. Stan, the patient, was finally at peace, and all I could do was smile back at his corpse. Ever since that particular incident, the work I do here has become even more important than I had ever dreamed. I keep hoping to catch her slash him again and taste a bit of the sweetness that Stan did that morning. That one's awesome. It 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 is it like is a, a bizarre totally different, story. Totally different level. It's still terrifying, but it's a really cool story because it almost have the, takes have, away the fear. You have the Grim Reaper, and then you have the Angel of Death. Yeah, 
And it's like it, it's the collector of souls for each side. It almost takes away the fear of dying. Although I don't think that I would be as um, excited or eager to re-see this entity, especially if like you see this thing suck his soul out. Yeah, I think it's kind of creepy. It's it's almost like it hits me two different ways. It's it's almost like I like she's empathizing with her patients, like she wants all of them to pass that peacefully. Yeah, you know no, I, mean? I get that. That's and then that's on the fair. on and more existential side of that, it's almost like she hopes to whenever she dies, that she hopes to have the same experience. Well, yeah, that's well. what we can all hope for. Yeah, and just the words that he said, like that's why I chose this one. When he's like, "Isn't she beautiful?" It's fucking weird, man. Dude, it, I know I keep referencing this, but it almost made me think of like the Bledsoe case. A little bit. Where he he talks about the lady and her being so beautiful. Yep. But that's and the only she's correlation. A soul I, yeah, that's the only correlation I have there. But I just just the way that he described her and how wonderful she is made me think of that. Next one I have, I call "Death on the Train." Uh, this is a pretty unsettling experience of a person who kind of accidentally saw death taking a soul. So it happened to a witness named Derek Cabriol, Cabriole of New York City. Uh, he says that he takes the subway home every night at about 2 a.m. at a time when essentially the train is empty, and this particular evening was no different. He said the only passenger on the train was a slouched over man in dirty clothes who he thought was just a homeless man looking for a place to stay warm, so he just kind of hoarded up on the subway. Uh, the witness essentially... Didn't pay any attention to the man, was just reading his newspaper, trying to get his commute over with. But when he looked up, he could see that another man was now sitting next to the, the homeless man. He said it was stood out odd to him because he had not made a stop. There had not been a stop, and he had not seen or heard the partition between the cars open or close. The witness says that it happened thusly. There was, quote, there was another passenger sitting right next to him, but we hadn't stopped and no one else had entered the car. He was just the most gaunt, pale creature that I had ever seen. I couldn't help but staring at him. I don't think he noticed me just then. His fingernails were blue, black, not painted, more like cyanotic. Yeah, cyanotic, cyanotic, I don't know, cyanotic. The whole car began to smell of dying flowers and wet earth. It was very weird. He touched the sleeping homeless man on the shoulder. He was obviously groggy, but he looked, the strange man straight in the eyes and broke into a smile and tears at the same time. Then they both turned and looked straight at me. I thought I was going to keel over right there. An incredible cold ran up my spine and I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing up. I had to look away almost immediately as it was somewhat extremely painful looking into the stranger's eyes. They seemed to be drawing me in and my heart was pounding so fast I felt that I was going to pass out. Just then, the lights in the car went out, as they frequently do. It was only for a moment or so, but when they came back on, the man was the strange man was gone, and the other man was slumped over in the side of the seat. I knew I just knew that he was dead. His eyes were staring into space, and he had the most peaceful f- smile. The whole event affected me deeply. I am both both apprehensive and assured at the same time. That experience taught me that Azrael is gentle but harness an incredible, awesome energy of some type that both frightens and attracts me to this, or at the same time. Sometimes now I still see his eyes in the darkness. Well, that's a terrifying statement. <laughs> I would hope that I didn't see the eyes in the darkness. The, the, yeah, especially the eyes of the Collector of Souls. Yeah, it makes you feel like he's just waiting. Yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> I hope he doesn't say it like that. <laughs> like it, it's just especially if it's a feet tickler. Like I feel like it's a deranged way of looking at it because this person's stoked. They're like, "Oh, it's so awesome," and I'm looking at it like, "Well, hey, if you're a uh, a loving entity, why are you being a creeper and hiding in the dark and just show me your creepy ass eyes?" 
<laughs> it is it is weird that it has like so many different personifications. Like, yeah. And well, like I said, it's almost like there's two different like yeah. like one for heaven and one for hell. That is weird. It is weird. I got And one then you one. have uh balloon death. He's probably purgatory. Who the fuck knows what he is? Uh, or yeah, or wherever. I don't know. Maybe they're yeah, maybe maybe one of them causes the accidents and one of them takes the souls and the other one helps people pass and like maybe there's a whole a whole hierarchy to this thing that we don't know about. Well, we'll find out sooner or later. Yeah. Hopefully I don't get balloon man, but if I do Same. whatever. Whatever. Uh, I got one more here, also from Mysterious Universe. I call this one Death is With Us. Uh, Carl McCollum of Virginia claims that there's been a specter of death that has followed his family for years and often serves as a portent of death. Typically, this entity would show up as a stranger in black sitting amongst, cra- amongst the crowd at the wakes of family members' deaths. One occasion, the witness had an interaction with this mystery man which would become an experience he would never forget. He is quoted in stating on the incident, I come from a very large family, and I have attended wakes of many relatives. Coming from a traditional Irish Catholic background, all of our funeral rites are lavish in pomp and circumstance. From the age of six, my first wake, I can remember the presence of a man who came to the service, the service alone, spoke to no one, but simply sat in the background and observed. I remember asking my dad, who is that man? He'd simply say, what man? He couldn't see him. It seemed that my aunt and I were the only ones that could ever see this man. And she would never talk to me about it. He's been at every wake thus far. Most of our family wakes were held at a local tavern and split between there and the funeral home and our family home. The mystery man would sit at the end of the bar in the shadows, just staring at everyone. I remember thinking how beautiful he was when I was younger, with pale marble-like skin, extremely tall with incredibly dark eyes that seemed to pierce right through your soul. But his clothes were always wrong to me, out of time, almost as if it were. A couple of times he raised his glass to me as if to make a toast, and then he'd smile. Finally, when I was about 17, I decided it was time to confront this mystery man. Oddly enough, it was at the wake of my aunt, the only other person who ever saw him. He was at his usual place at the end of the bar when I walked up to him. I stopped about five feet from where he sat, not out of choice, but because my body just locked up as if I suddenly became paralyzed. In the space of that last step, I seemed to have stepped out of time. The voices in the background faded to a faint whisper, and everything sounded like it was coming through a long tube. Without thinking, I blurted out, Why are you here? He simply turned toward me and said with a smile, Very good question, son. Very good. Allow me to turn it back on you. He laughed momentarily, and his face became a skull for a split second. The next thing I remember is my dad tapping me on the shoulder, asking me who am I talking to, kind of being annoyed with me. I just looked at him and somehow knew from that day forward I wasn't the same. I looked into my father's eyes and literally saw his death, every detail that happened exactly to a T seven months after my aunt died. He was there at my father's wake as well. I think that he shall always be with me, I'm not as of yet certain as to why, but I'm learning fast via these new sensations that he has gifted me with. Bro, you just got ghost ridered. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, Penance stare right there. Well, it's it almost sounds like homie is passing it on. Ah, oh, I didn't think about like that. Like when, when dude dies, you're carrying the torch, man. That would be... That would be a horrible that, burden to bear. That is exactly where I am landing on this one because, makes, because like he asked, "Why are you here?" and he like, he's like, "Yo, why are you here?" Yeah, he's like, "Oh, you want you? okay, <laughs> yeah, I knew you were gonna do." Like it was almost like it was all meant to be, and like dude was biding time for that moment to just pass the the curse, if you will, on. Yeah, it makes. Yeah, I don't know, man. It makes me wonder if it's if it's tied specifically to him or specifically to his family or if this dude is at every funeral wake across the world and only some people can see him or how that works exactly. I don't know. But now this, I wonder if he can look into other people's eyes and see their deaths now. That would, that would be a better question. That would definitely because be a better question. Because that would be terrible. Yeah, because if he couldn't, 
then my theory kind of falls apart. But if he could, then he's definitely going to be the next collector. Could you imagine every every person you look at? No. That would be awful. No. No, I wouldn't want that at all. No. And dude calls it a Hard gift. Hard pass. Dude calls it a gift. Oh, man. It, it opens up so many questions. Like, say it's somebody you're super close to and you see how they're going to die. Can you change that? Can you? Oh, I would try. You would spend all your time trying to. But then it would just be like Final Destination. Death always finds a way. Yeah. Oh, my God. You because look You then, look into their eyes and you're like, oh, no, they're going to get hit by a car March 11th. Mm-hmm. And then you you change it. Yeah. And then the next time you look at them, it's something different. Changes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then it's just nonstop. Yeah. You, you would you would run yourself into the into the ground. Oh, it'd be awful. It would. It would be absolutely terrible. It'd be the worst the worst burden to have. Cuz there's like there's so many people important to you. You'd yeah, trying... and it would get to that point where you just accept it. Yeah, I just look in the mirror and look at my own eyes. And then it's just blackness. Yeah, and it's just like you're it doesn't here. Show anything. It says you're here forever. That's your punishment. Yay. I'd be like I'm sick with it. And the grim reaper be tickling my feet. Yeah. <laughs> And the sphere man to be dancing around. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is in this life? But yeah, those are my. Uh, those are cool. Little weird. The last one was a really, really fucking cool story. Weird death encounters. It's just there's so many of them. Once you start looking, there's so many of them. I, it's just you could compile a fuck ton of these stories where people have seen angels of death, harbingers of death, grim reapers. You name it people are seeing it so there's um, like like i say where there's smoke there's fire people got to be seeing some sort of entity that's tied to the passing of this life i believe it kind of like the the farrier of lost souls it's 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 bizarre but on that note thanks for hanging out with us today hope you appreciate it hope your monday's sick hope everybody got through it unscathed and hope nobody saw any harbingers of death let's check it out let's check us out at all our social medias facebook instagram youtube twitter tiktok reddit discord come and hang out and be part of the hollow sky family and until next time stay safe stay weird and don't put up with any grim reaper in your apartment tickling your toes because that's you know kink shame but that's weird grim reaper just don't do that